My name is Peter Walser. I live in a place called The Strand, uh, about 200 meters from the beach. I'm a winemaker and it's called the Blank Bottle Winery. So basically the piece of land that I'm sitting on now, which is a plot, is the only, only land I own. One vine and that it doesn't even bear grapes. So I studied wine for, for four years. My third year ran out of money, started selling wine. So I bought unlabeled wine, sold it, um, stayed here with my parents. And then I got to a point where I was selling a lot of wine. Obviously made a bit of cash. Then in my third year, I said to my lecturer, can I like start my own winery? My fourth year, instead of doing a practical. So he said, that's fine. So I, my friend who lives on a farm, we took his car out the garage, put in like a concrete floor, small press, small tanks. I bought all these small scale equipment and I started making wine. That was while I was studying. Then I kept on selling these wines as, as with no labels on because I, my clients, the people buying wine from me, always bought wine with no labels on. I sold four and a half thousand bottles of wine in the first four weeks from my car. And then I, I went, I kept on doing that because I had these clients. And then I made some wine, I bottled it. I didn't even put a label on it, I just sold it like that. Two years later, I was out of university the same. Made a bit of wine, but small scale because it's expensive to make wine. So small scale, bought wines in, sold it, with no, but always no labels. And then two years after university, the police closed me down. I had no liquor license. And so for every liter of wine you sell to the end consumer, there's a tax payable. And I never did that. I did most things wrong. <laughs> and then I also sold wine with no traceability on it, no label. So if you sell wine, you have to have a, some legal things on your bottle and you have to have traceability. You have to have a label, some kind of label on it. I didn't have anything like that. So they took everything I had, police, they took all my stuff. And then they, then I had to go and explain. So they fined me quite a bit. I had to pay, they knew of, they knew of every liter of wine I've produced in two and a half years and sold. So I paid all my taxes, I paid all my fines. Uh, I applied for a liquor license and they said, okay, now they'll give me my wine back if I show them a label for my wine that's legal. So I had a lady that came to me that same week and she said she wants to buy wine, but she doesn't drink any Shiraz. Yep. So Shiraz, whatever you say. Syrah. 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 <laughs> whatever, she doesn't drink Shiraz. So um, she, if it's Cab Merlot, whatever, she'll buy. So I, I, okay, I only had like a couple of cases of Shiraz that was in my kitchen yep. uh, that the police didn't take. It was at my house. So I took a bottle of Shiraz, I poured her a glass, she loved the wine and she bought a couple of bottles. So I felt to, at that stage that this lady had a preconceived idea towards Shiraz, which was wrong. Maybe she had a bad quality wine. It was nothing to do with Shiraz, just a bad quality wine. If someone don't know what they're about to taste, they judge it purely on what's in the bottle. So I thought, okay, I'm going to call my wine blank bottle. So I wrote on, so it's just like a block from Microsoft Word, blank bottle, black, put it on the, on the bottle. Since a child, I loved stories. So I felt like, okay, this wine has got a great story behind it. Why don't I like take the title of the story? So give, write down the story, take the title of the story and make that the batch name of the wine. So I wrote like an essay on the first wine. I put it on the website, blackbottle.co.z and the code name. So everybody that tastes the wine, they, they can drink it at a table without knowing what they're having. And then they take the batch name, go to the internet and they can read up the whole story. But it's like literally a story I write. Not, yeah. I've never written a tasting note in my life. We do what we do because of two reasons. Because it's fun and because we're free. We can do whatever we want. I think it started off by me not... I never, I've never worked for a, a winemaker in South Africa like being an assistant in a proper winery. So I just sort of started and I went on by myself. So I had, I had no connection to a style, to an area, nothing. So I just did everything, anything from anywhere. And that sort of, at that stage, I did this and I did that and then I liked that a bit and I liked that one a bit, so I kept both. But then I see something else and, I, and it sort of just went from there. And the vineyards, they will find you. I know it sounds like a bit, weird but they do find you you don't have to go look for them they will 
it happens. You just go on and then you see something in them. And the moment you see a vineyard that is exciting, you will feel it. There's no plan to these things. Once we get that, we take it into the winery, we stand next to the barrel or the tank or whatever, we think, the first thing I'm thinking about, then I'll write it on the barrel. And see, this is the name. And, uh, and then 99% of the time, that name becomes the wine. Because it's not because it's a great name, it's actually a hot, it's sometimes a really stupid name. But you've seen it so many times, and after a while you've been talking about this barrel as Lix, for, for instance. Lix was a, the first time ever in my life, which is two years ago, I bought a new French oak barrel. And I put it on top of a stack and I wrote on there, I said, this looks, this feels luxury. And the Afrikaans for luxury is Lix. So I wrote Lix on it. Now that's the name of the wine. Sometimes it doesn't come that easily. So there's one wine that's Fernau Perez I'm making from the Swartla. Um, I sat with, at the end I bottled it and I said to my wife, what are we going to call this wine? And she said, tell me the story. And then I said, oh, well, I was on this farm and we were in the Carnia vineyard. And then I asked the farmer, Can, what's this? I had to pick up my passport. So I said, I, want to, I need to get from the, it's between Marmersbury and Darling and Hopefield in the middle of nowhere. I said, how do I get from here to the big road heading to Cape Town? And he said, well, you go past this vineyard, that way, until you hit, and then you drive into the Fernau Perez and you turn left. And I said, what? He said, no, Fernau Perez, his dad planted it there, or his grandfather, whoever. I drove, I saw the Fernau Perez, and I felt like, oh my goodness, why don't I just buy half a ton? So I bought that, so I told this whole story to my wife, and she said, oh, that's the name of your wine, Kortpat Kaptu, like the shortcut to Cape Town. And now the wine is called Kortpat Kaptu. So, I mean, these things kind of happen, and like I say, by the time you put it in a bottle, normally there's a story, and when there's a story, there's, there's a title, and when there's a title to the story, there's some kind of picture. That, that picture you just sometimes it takes like 10 minutes to do a label sometimes it if you try too hard it can take forever i feel like so when we bottle a wine and if it's a tall slim wine then i'll put it in a tall slim bottle i'll put a cab in a riesling bottle if it's the cab's elegant enough for a riesling bottle so there i'll go for the weirdest shape ever because if you put a riesling bottle on a the table then everybody says i want to taste your riesling I mean, so we put stuff in Riesling bottles, but it's like Shiraz, but it's a fine, delicate Shiraz. I'm a new producer. I'm a first generation. I, can, I can't think like that because I'm not the old world. It's South Africa. It's whatever we do, what we do. And yes, if it turns out to be something that I can make year on year, 20 years and it's like Scott I can do a vertical of 20 years in, in, in the future obviously that's amazing but I can't dictate that I can't it can't be part of my plan because there's, in South Africa it's very hard to plan I, I just take it as it comes and I really hope that one day I can have these kind of wines but it's definitely not part of my goal we absolutely never had any forethought of doing anything so that's what I'm that's my answer the struggle will determine the outcome and that's going to become part of the way your wine tastes. I like different places for different reasons. I like moving around. I feel like when your cars, when the wheels of your car turn, stuff happens. So no, I don't have a specific place. I think the place is this here where I'm sitting. This is the place. I'm, I live in the Strand. It's like, yeah. Call it spiritual home. <laughs> I don't know. This is the spiritual home, they're not blank bottle. Is this this home? This thing I cannot do by myself, it's impossible. So if you look back, you've got the farmers, like I said, you've got the, the viticulturists that's assisting us, you've got people that's just all nice to us. Then in the cellar, we've got a super strong team. I've got a guy in charge there called Stefan Johannes. Stefan takes charge of everything. When I talk, I talk to Stefan. Stefan's got Zander and he's got Thomas underneath him in the wet cellar. And things get done, but on an absolutely perfect level. Every little small thing, all the detail. Yes, we don't have like a fancy cellar with, with, with big gates and big flags and glass and stuff like that. We have uh, four walls and a roof. It's a cool room. 
There's no, we've got one drain running down. So you're limited to all these things. But within that area, we, that, that team is doing an extremely good job. Then we've got the section next door to it where we've got Henry in charge of all orders packed. Like I'm talking about a little case there or a pallet going to the UK. got five ladies that do all the labeling by hand. They label 120,000 bottles a year by hand. Each bottle. We print on real paper. So without those guys, I'm nothing. Or we're nothing. Or there is nothing. I was born here. 